a live show. Like what is, and now we are live. Okay. Hello. you. <laughs> I'm just laughing because we're having a moment on zoom before we went live. Hello everybody in the it's exo Gingy Facebook community. Welcome to the industry. I am very, very, very excited for today's episode. I'm in an extremely good mood. I've been in literally the best mood of my life in the last like week and a half. My life is like transformed and that's a whole other conversation, but I'm in a very good mood. And I'm also joined by some three amazing humans that I'm going to introduce in a minute who are um, in the collective. And so if you've been keeping up um, with the industry last week, if you've been keeping up with what's been going on on my social media and you're not in the collective right now for the last 10 days we have been doing the collective festival inside my collective which is a year membership to all of my things and um this festival like i mentioned on the last um the last industry was really about a few different things to celebrate the collective april is the anniversary of the collective but also we're taking these 10 days this year to really just pour into the community, do special calls, special coaching calls. There's celebrations, awards, giveaways, like a big event is happening right now. And so I really wanted to bring forward more so to my social media and feature a lot of amazing, well, everyone in the collective is amazing, but amazing people who've been doing this with me for a year, a year plus, people who've had really incredible results, whether it's financially or not just financially, right? In my world, it's yes, the money, the success and all the things, but the transformation that really happens in the collective is a whole person radical transformation. And so it's been really incredible to feature these testimonies, testimonials and these people who have really been doing all of the work, the strategy stuff, the mindset stuff, the embodiment stuff, the, the happiness stuff, right? All of these things. And so we've been, if you've noticed, obviously on the industry, but even on my Instagram story, I've been featuring more clients and just showcasing the work that we're doing in the collective and the types of people that are in the collective. And it has been just fantastic. And so with the theme of the festival and the industry today, I have three amazing collective members with me and I'm going to introduce them. And then we have some questions and discussions that we're going to bring forward for them and have a really great episode. If you're here live with us and you're in the collective, Cassandra, hello, let us know in the comments. And if you're not in the collective, but you're here just, you know, um, connecting with, with members and maybe understanding what it's like a little bit more to do the work that we're doing in the collective and you have any questions um, posted in the feed as well. So with all that being said, I have I have Lynn with me today, I have Bridge with me today, and I have Steven with me today. And it's, you know, I'm just going to go on a little bit of tangents as, as we lead this. And I was thinking about this this morning I as I was thinking about doing this call. I, one of the biggest things that I talk about lately, and one of the biggest things that is so important to me is not just like the work that we're doing, but the relationships that we have with our clients in all different capacities. And I feel so extremely lucky, blessed, all the things that I have extremely amazing um, relationships with my clients, obviously close proximity clients, mastermind clients, but also in the collective, I form the most amazing relationships with these humans. And it's because my clients are amazing. When you have amazing clients and you have an amazing coach, you get great relationships and vice versa. And the thing it's like, you know, especially the last couple of weeks and doing this with the industry and, and much of what I do with the industry is bring on clients. And it's not like, oh, I'm just bringing on clients. I, I'm bringing on people that I like, I love, and I want to talk to outside of a coaching container. And I want my community to know them. And it's just like, this is, this work is so special to me because of these relationships. And we should feel so in love with our clients and so proud to like bring people on and have these awesome discussions, right? Like I don't do a lot of collaborations the way that other people do collaborations. Hi, Megan is on, but it's like, I was just thinking about Lynn Bridge and Steven today. I'm like, oh my God, these people, I just can't wait to have a 45, 30 minute hour long conversation just because I simply love them. And how amazing is it that we get to have businesses where we love the people that we're working with and we get to do really awesome things like this and, and co-create. So with all that being said, I love these humans. I'm excited to chat with them and it feels so special. And I'm excited if you don't know these people, now you, you get to know, you get to know them. So 
I think the best way to start off is I'm going to open up with a question and whoever feels like you want to jump in, just kind of unmute and go for it. And we'll see where the conversation um, takes us. And these, these questions are like coming from me and Team XO combined a little bit. So it's like, it, it almost feels like I'm asking the question on behalf of Team XO because I might use my name in the question. <laughs> yeah. So this is the first question. What did you feel like you were missing or looking for in your business before or when you joined Steph's world, my world? Someone want to jump in? Like before you joined, what did you feel like you were looking for, you were missing? And then you were like, there's something about Steph or the collective or whatever. Like there's a piece that I feel like is missing and that's what I want from this space. Who's it gonna be? Who's gonna break the ice? I'll like, jump in first. Hi Steph, thank you so much. Hi everyone. So I just I remember this so so well. It was Valentine's Day and I had just jumped into container with you. And then off the back of that I remember saying to you, how can I continue this? Like what is the thing for me it felt like what is the piece that will hold me and I also knew that I was looking to create a better more energetically sustainable business model and I knew that having the different kind of pieces from the collective would then give me that and like literally that's what I did I tore apart everything that I already had I used to do the big launch with all the energy do the launch and then it was like you know fall flat for a couple of months and now it feels very much like this have an you know, I, you, this is what I actually need to say. It, it's something is like, I've noticed people feel like this kind of a way of doing business feels unsustainable and everyone's version of sustainability is different, but like the big launch thing and then end feels unsustainable for me and for many people. And it's like the way that I teach launching and selling is more of just like an ongoing kind of thing. And for some people, people think, think that that's feels more unsustainable than you know what I mean? Like direct launches. And it's just like, again, everyone's business is different. Everyone's energy is different. Everyone goes through different seasons, but like, and again, there's no right or wrong, but I just, I'm so glad that you led with that Lynn, because I think some people think like it was the way that Steph's doing it is doing, it feels exhausting, but one, I don't teach people to replicate, but it's more of like to find a way where there's a flow of everything. And that's actually more sustainable than like big highs. And then what it feels like big lows. So I don't know if anyone wants to speak to that, but just something that's been on my mind lately is I think people think that that this way, whatever this is, right, is unsustainable, but it's more of you're finding a flow and a balance that's ongoing as opposed to just like big injections all the time. Cool. Okay. I wanted to speak to that too. Yeah, of course. Um, so for me, it was also like that. And I remember when I met you, I went into your world and I started following you on Instagram. I started seeing all these triggering content. I'm like, she's hitting a spot. <laughs> I remember, I know I told you this before that um, I unfollowed you once because I'm like, I'm so done with her. <laughs> this is me being fully ben, real with you right you. now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to unfollow her. I don't want to hear it. And then I'm like, <clears throat> maybe it's not her. Maybe it's me. <laughs> I am the problem. It's me. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, no, wait, let me go follow her again. And then I followed you. And like, I think like two days later, I'm in the collective. But for me, it was also, I was taught that it needs to be, oh, don't sell every day. Like, shut up for a minute only create content don't sell and then this is the period that you sell and then you stop selling and then for a couple of months you sell you don't sell and it's like having like this only it has to be this peak every time and then for me it felt like oh shoot this has to work like this launch needs to work because otherwise, like, oh, I'm going to go like for three more months without selling. Oh, my goodness. Money is not coming in. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. So it, it, it kind of felt like there's so much pressure to with every single launch. And now it feels like, no, if this thing that I want to explore and I want like I want to do this, this master class. And I got two people in good because this masterclass isn't defining the whole business. Yeah. It's just like one thing that I want to test and that's fine. 
And what I've also noticed is like, okay, maybe two people joined today, but like in a month or two, I can do a bundle and put a two, three things together and boom, more people are joining. And I'm like, I love you, Steph. This is amazing. <laughs> 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 Chris, I love you so much. I'm so happy you're here. But like, th this is the thing too, is I feel like, like, I know for me, I'm like, I, I never wanted to feel like I'm in a box. Like, that's just not who I am. And so it's like, if I'm going to run a business in this kind of way, why would I put myself in this box where it's exactly what you're saying of like, I want to feel the freedom of like, hey, there's an idea, there's an offer, let me put it out there. And like, yes, then everything's adding up over time. And it doesn't feel like there's constant pressure. of You need to make all the sales now because then you're then going to be in a non-sales phase like why do we create these stories or these constraints like one financially that doesn't even make sense but as a creator standpoint as well it's like why would I rob myself of just being like you know there, there's something to put out now go do that like so many people that I attract in my world are people who whether they realize it or not like it's very intuitive, right? Like there's most of the things that I do in my business that are the best things, the best launches, the best, whatever it comes from an idea, put it out there. But I would rob myself of that if it was like, well, you're not supposed to be selling this month. So then blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So it's like, and so I think like we get so black and white thinking of like business should be like this. And if I don't do it this way, then that's not business, but we're in, and I talk about this a lot, like to me, business feels like creativity. It feels like, like an, like I'm an artist. Right. And so we have to follow that flow. And I just think sometimes people have a hard time breaking out of that, that constraint. So I'm so happy that you said that. And I love you so much, Steven. I just, you know, there's certain people too, that like, they just come into your world. Like there's something about Steven. And as soon as you came into the collective, I've always like called you out on things without even having like a real relationship and then but I'm like I think he just he's down for it so here we are. <laughs> I'm so happy I love this okay Bridge do you want to chime in on this question the thing I was going to bring up was when I first found you I used to be so big into sales like I was like I had this sales month and then you were like cool but what's your cash <laughs> And that was such no a offense to your sales. No, no. I mean, I think like there's a time and I think that's also amazing to share that. And, and I talk about it too. But when I really started focusing on cash, I saw my business really blow up and also my leadership and the longevity of the business. And that's really when I started focusing on recurring income. And now like majority of my income is recurring. So I'm not relying on that. I have to launch or I have to host something. It's like, I'm good. And then everything else is overflow because I'm showing up daily. Yeah. And I, I love that you brought that up around like sales and cash and all these different things is because obviously in my world, I, to build that sustainability reoccurring income, but it's like, when we only focus on sales, it's like, but how much do you, what, what did you bring in now? Because what you have now is important to then to build that foundation. And so it's like, I, I'm to be very honest, like I've never said this publicly, it doesn't really matter. I would have, I, I don't, if I calculated my sales every month, it would be insane, but I, I don't look at that. Not because it's not important. Like it, that's, there's going to be reoccurring income, but it's more of like, what is actually in now what's coming in now. And I know through all the different things, like that's building, but I think so it's, you know what I actually think, I'm not saying you did this bridge, but this is what people do on the internet is because sales is always higher. People want to say sales. I made a million dollars in sales, but I made like $12 cash. And I'm like, wait, like that's not how it works. Like anyone could say they made anything in sales, but it's just, yeah, I totally get it. Okay. This is, this is so good. You guys are the best. Steven adds sauce to collective and to the calls Lou said in the comments. This is fantastic. Okay. Um, this is a question and it's not necessarily related at all to like being in my world at all, but I think it would be so fun to open the conversation around what has been your personal transformation from who you were to now, like when you started coaching to where you are now, like, like anything that comes to mind, more of like a personal transformation, less of business that you would love to share. Yes, no, maybe. I can start. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, 
I like you always talk about being in love with yourself or embodying who you are and loving all parts of you. And every single month when I see my income jump, it's not because I'm taking more action. Like I love action. Like I love moves and showing up and doing the thing. But when I really reflect over it, I'm like, I'm making more money because I love myself more. And then, and then naturally the strategy comes in naturally the posting happens, the, the investments, how I'm showing up. But it's like, that is the biggest takeaway from when I started my business to now. And I can look at pictures of myself too, and see the vast difference between the two. And it's like, I just love myself more. Yep. Like, and this is, I think about this so often and I made a post this week that was like 2019 versus last year, like 600K to 8 million. And when I really sat with myself and like, what do I want to share? Like, what is the truth? Nothing in that post is like, I learned how to sell offers and I built this business structure. Like the one strategy thing was brand, but everything else. And when I really said what it was the transformation, I'm like, I evolved as who, as a person, my mindset, my energy. And so I really believe it's like, the personal development, when we put that at the forefront, like you're saying, Bridge, that's the thing that is the catalyst to making the moves, then generating the business. But when we don't put our own energy, mindset, self-love, all of these things at the forefront, then how could we possibly show up and do all of these things? Like one, it's hard to be consistent, but then two, the potency is just watered down. So I, and, and the way to like, we're building coaching businesses based off of our energy, our, our, our information, our new codes, our new, like, how do we keep innovating if we're not treating ourselves like number one? So that's so big. And, and I see that when I look at extremely successful people, it's like, they're really taking care of themselves behind the scenes. And that, that is such a reflection. I love that. Okay. Who wants to pop up next? I remember, Steph, whenever I started in coaching, it was 2015, I'd already had success. I had a seven figure business in fashion and I was just completely lost in here. I was so disconnected. I didn't know. I had two kids. I was married at this point, but I didn't know who I was. And so my coaching journey really started because of that. It was a feeling and I wasn't so much chasing the outer success. It was more right. I feel like I've done a lot of that. Who can I become? And so, yes, I've created an amazing business and collaborations and all the things, but honestly, my kids are now 13 and 10 and everything has changed. My marriage, my relationship, like the big pieces, even we did this incredible photo shit on the beach the other night. And I was like, how is this my life? Like, it was so much fun. My daughter was there, my husband was there photographer, videographer, and we had the best, like, I will never forget that night. And I was like, the person I was in 2015 couldn't have shown up and done what she just did. So for me, it's, it's, it's been so many things behind the scenes that have actually then I've been able to bring in and teach around and then, you know, just bring into the business more so. And that's really deepened every other area. Like it just, it makes, the money, it makes the time, it makes everything else seem completely different. And I can so relate to this too, because like when it's like the inner transformation, we experience life completely different, even if certain things don't change, right? Like you guys, most people who follow me, I know you guys, like I'm, we're still living in the same house, Eric and I, like so many things are the same that they, they were years ago, but, but so many things obviously have changed, but what's changed the most is like the way that I see life. So then we're like, we're able to experience completely different memories or moments and not much has changed outside of us, but because I see life differently, then we're creating a life that, that I didn't even know was possible. Similar to you, like you, you have changed now you're doing things that you wouldn't do or the way that, that you're raising your, your children or your family. It's like, because of the work that you did, whether things outside of you change or not. And that to me is like the most beautiful thing. Like that's what life is about. And it's like, to know that we can create a brand new life from just doing the inner work blows my mind. Like we just need to, to, to work on ourselves and we can create a completely new reality. Like why, how are we not all doing this to this level? You know what I mean? So, Oh, this is, this is so good. All right. Steven, did you want to share on this one? Yeah, definitely. For me, it was more that now I, 
I trust myself more. Like I genuinely trust, trust myself more. And I, I love myself more. And I think for me, it's been a journey because I, I grew up in a family that I was taught, go get that degree and go get that nine to five job and still stay at that nine to five job and build um, or climb that corporate ladder and stay as much as years as possible in that so that they cannot get rid of you or blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, sure. Thank you, mom. Thank you, dad, for teaching me what you know, but I want to do it differently. And in my family, I, I don't have any entrepreneurs that I can look up to. I don't have any people that I'm like, oh, this is what I want because everyone just worked a nine to five job. So I'm like, I want to do things differently. And that's for me, it's like this online world has given me the opportunity that I don't need. It kind of it feels weird to say I don't need my family to build something that because they are not aware of it. They don't know what this is. They, it took my parents like more than a year to really understand what I do. I remember like a year later, they asked me, why do you sit so long after your, after your computer talking to people? Like, <laughs> what is that? I'm like, I'm coaching. This is my work. This is, they, they're paying me for this. And then, so for me, it's like, it, I, I am also setting, um, I'm changing the narrative for my family, for future generations. And I see it already in my cousins. I see it already in my nephews, my nieces. And that for me is like, wow, this is beautiful. That's the, more like the, the, the outside world. But for me, it's like, I trust myself more. I'm, I started my business as a wedding photographer. I've built a successful wedding photography business. But in 2020, there was no wedding anymore. And then I'm like, if I can lose everything and I can build it all again, I can lose it again and I can build it again. And I trust myself that I can do that. So for me, that's been really, really powerful. I trust myself and I lead with courage and I lead with, with power. And I, I know that you say this a lot. I am the one and I lead the way and I keep on showing up because I trust myself again and again. This is like everything right now that like, I'm all about this because this is the thing that I like, and thank you for sharing this because I think when people really get this, your life changes and you become unstoppable because it's like to, to do something that you didn't even know was possible and to do something that your whole family doesn't even know is possible. That takes so much courage. And then you build that self-trust and then you do it once exactly what you're saying, then you're you're not afraid to do it again. And then there's always the next levels. But I think so many people get so stuck at the beginning of like so scared to do it once where it's like, then we never build the self-trust and that confidence. And so much of, I can relate exactly what you're saying is like, so much of me building my business and my life now has been through courage after courage after courage. That's why I'm confident now. Right. And so many people are like, I want that confidence. I want that self-trust, but not willing to make those scary steps. But it's like, this is the way to show yourself you're going to be okay. Like something I say to myself all the time is like, Steph, you're going to be okay. But the reason that I actually feel that is because I've done things before that I felt like, I, I don't know if I can do it. And then even just trying builds that self-trust piece where it's like, well, I tried. And even if it didn't work out how I thought it, it would, I'm okay. That's what we want. And to me, like, that's not only like entrepreneurship, but that's such a fulfilling life to know, like, we can constantly do things and grow and it either like works right away. Or if not, I have those memories and those experiences, like that's what this is. And so I love that you shared that. And that's such a huge piece of what, again, I want to continue to share with people because when they get it, your life changes, right? We get so caught up of like, what if you didn't take that risk because you were scared or your family didn't understand, like you wouldn't be here today, but you did it for you. You trusted yourself. You built that self-trust to keep innovating. And now you're even seeing like the ripple with your nieces and your nephews. Like how, how amazing is that? That is just, this is everything. Um, people in the comments, like beautiful building that deep self-trust makes you feel unshakable. Yep. 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 Okay. Yes, this. Wow. So good. Okay. Um, what is the next juicy question I want to ask you guys? Okay. 
this is we're gonna go more related to like let's just say like in the collective or over the last six months or the last year however long you've been two years whatever what has been maybe it's just the thing that pops in your mind right now but what has been one of the biggest like aha moments breakthroughs in in my teachings in my world and maybe you know exactly like to reference where that came from or maybe it's just something that's that I repeat over and over again, but one of the biggest things that stands out for you, a biggest aha. I'm like scared. Like, I don't know. We're like nothing. No. <laughs> I want to mention karma. Karma for oh. me was like, if I had a known this from 2015 on, it just would have saved a lot of slow growth you know what lynn so many i hear this from a lot of people like so for everyone watching karma is a program where i basically talk about how to be a client and like not even just how to be a client but like the 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 energetics and the mindset of what it's like to to like whether it's a one-to-one -one relationship a mastermind relationship a group program like how to take someone off, like how to take a coach off the pedestal, how to like navigate your feelings and what you might feel when you're learning from someone, or if you don't agree with everything or like all of these different things that like Lynn is saying, like, I wish I would have, I wish I would have been able to teach that sooner, but I didn't have the words until this year, but it's just, I, and I was saying this to a client yesterday. I actually think one of the biggest reasons that people don't get results whatever results mean in mentorship or coaching programs any capacity is because of that pedestal piece that i talked a lot about in karma or like like these blocks that we put in between the relationships that we have with our coaches and our mentors of like like if i don't get something right away i make it mean something or not be willing to see the human in the coach you just see what the facade or what you want to see like all of these things that come in between really actually being able to listen to what a coach is saying. And I think that this actually applies to whether it's like someone's teaching a hundred people in a program or whether it's a more intimate setting. And I think it's such a fascinating thing too, because I don't think anyone tries to do that. Like no one wants to put someone on a pedestal or no one wants to have their, there be things in between, but I think it just happens in the dynamic. And so thank you for sharing that Lynn and I think like I, I've received this feedback from a lot of people like no matter where they are in their journey with me but a lot of people like just started and they took karma and like that changed everything for even like their past experiences with other coaches like they were even able to think about things that they were taught in the past and see it through a different lens which then transformed things so yeah um karma karma is a big one okay Anybody else want to share? I feel like I feel like I'm just gonna say this before someone goes. I I feel like I might be doing and adding another module or something to Karma like soon. So, and and the fact I'm getting so much feedback, like people are bringing up Karma out of nowhere, and I'm not expecting it. That like my mind is like ding ding ding. There's something else to add there. So just throwing it out there. I think Karma should be like a prerequisite for all programs like go watch this and then come do the thing but um the two things that stuck out to me the most were hot audience like I have binged hot audience like 10 times I know. and when I found you I you can see me commenting back through the thread I'm sure on the Facebook group but when I found you I had like 2,000 followers and we almost had 14,000 and it's not about the followers either but like the engagement the saves the posts get like not engagement you know engagement doesn't always equal income but it really changed my visibility on the internet. So that one and um, potent prosperity, the meditations that you did in there, like I would just jam out to them and program and pattern myself to show up more confidently. I love that. There bridges someone and a lot of people do this in the collective is like going back to certain programs like multiple times and and every person has probably Stephen is doing this too like every person probably has their favorite for you that they go back but I'll see like bridge there's other people Tanner does this a lot too and I'll see like comments because it'll pop up on my Facebook and I'm like oh like it's so cool that so many like hot audience potent prosperity it doesn't even matter what it is 
it's like six months later, a year later, it lands differently. And then it's like, you keep upping your game. Like bridge is such a good example of the hot audience piece and even potent prosperity on the energetic side of like keeping up with the same things, but refining it and hearing it differently over and over again is insane. I love this. Okay, Steven. So then tell us, what do you keep binging? <laughs> the one for me is like the new era of you. I'm like, come on. That, I think like that first one it w w I would mention and also the blueprint because coming from that masculine energy of it has to be this way, it has to be this way, it has to be this way. It's like, no, it doesn't have to be any way. It could be your way and giving, and you know, having that permission, you're giving me that permission to just explore and looking at all the different things that, like selling two things or multiple things at the same time. Wait, what? The old Steve is like, wait, no, that, that's impossible. And you're like, let me show you how I do it. And you do it. And I'm like, ah, okay. So for me, it's like that, those, those two, like the new era of you, like really tapping into that new era of you. And also a little bit of the masculine, a little bit of the strategy, which is the blueprint for me has been, it's been, I, I really have to mention hot audience as well. I'm like the whole collector, the whole playlist, you know? <laughs> oh my God. I feel like, and I do this too. And you, I'm sure we all do this with our own programs. Like I go through seasons, like era of you is the best thing ever and then I'll be like hot audience is the best thing like it's all the best things but we go through seasons of like this is my current favorite this is my current favorite this is my current favorite so I love this so much okay I uh oh Megan says I could listen to surrendered sales daily surrendered sales is a good one as well so good um this is a really cool question and I'm like I don't even know what my answer would be to this but and Jake this was Jake's question have you achieved what you had initially set out to achieve when you joined the coaching industry? And I think it's just interesting because we start in coaching thinking I'm going to do X thing and we either do it and realize that's actually not what I wanted or you don't do it and you realize that that was, that was wrong, not wrong, but you know what I mean? Of like that was unrealistic or not actually what I wanted to build. So I'm curious if anyone, like like when you first started, what did you imagine you'd be doing? And is that happening? And did you realize it looks completely different? Or maybe you've now realized like there's a whole other goal that you want to achieve, or maybe your version of success or whatever has completely transformed. So I'm curious to see what comes up for you guys. And that might be a good prompt for anyone listening to think about as well. I'll, I'll go. I'm sorry, Bridge. <laughs> I saw you on your. <laughs> so for me, it's been like that freedom again, referencing my way, the way I, I I grew up. Like I have to go a nine to five job. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. And now I'm like, no, I don't. I don't have to do that. And um, so I was I was born and raised in Aruba, really small island. And I I um moved to Europe, the Netherlands, Amsterdam. This is where I live. But I don't really like the cold. So when it's cold, I'm like, Ugh, I don't want to be here. But I'm like, now it's like, well, I can just book a ticket, come to Aruba, be with my family and even work here. I can work from wherever. And I'm living a life that I'm making the, the, I'm making the decisions. I'm, I'm choosing for me rather than having someone choosing for me. And that for me has been like the biggest thing. Because beginning, as I told you, I'm, I was a wedding photographer. I'm still a wedding photographer, but I needed to be a certain place, a certain time to work, to make money. Now I can be anywhere and I'm still making money. So having that freedom for me is like, yeah, I love this. And this is exactly what I wanted. And I have it now. And I'm like, what is my life? I, I, I love this. Oh my God. And you know what? I think everyone like wants that kind of freedom, but I think when you start to, to live it, you realize, holy crap, this is what I've always dreamed of. Like the fact that I can just choose what I want to do or where I want to go, or I can make money however I want. Like once you, once that starts to happen, you realize like, this is it, this is success now. And that piece of what we were talking about earlier of like, I can just keep evolving and, and creating a new version of what freedom means for me. And that I think is like that's fulfilling, that's success. And that version is is different for everybody. So this is so good. Okay. Oh, Bridge, do you want to jump in? 
Yeah. When, oh, and I love that, Stephen. That was like, I'm over here like, yes, <laughs> just smiling with you. It's amazing. The freedom. I, I wanted to say when I first started, I wrote on my vision board, be your own boss, be debt free, travel and host retreats and make $5,000 a month. That's all I wanted. Like, I was like, that is the epitome. Yes. Sign me up. I'll achieve that. And then I did that like within the first six months. And it's like what you're saying of, of just like figuring out who you can become and what you can do and defying all odds. Now I'm not even setting goals. It's just like, let's just see, like I have an idea of what the next thing is, but let's just play. Let's see, let's get creative. But I always like to look back of like, I just wanted 5k and to be debt free. And now it's completely different. At the very, 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 very beginning of my journey, like the first group program I ever took, I have, and I still have it in a journal where I wrote like, like 10K months, 10K, like over and over, like, like just like writing that down. And I didn't even know like what that meant, but it was just like, if I could just do that, like, oh my God, like, you know what I mean? It's so funny to look back and then now like you are so beyond 5k, like it's like, what? Like th that's so small, but at the time it is big and it can't, you know what I mean? And so it's just like to be so about that. And then when you get it, you realize there's so much more, like not just financially, but what that means to like our whole piece of what you've been bringing up here, Bridge of like who you, who you are becoming and focus on the piece of the self-love, the personal development. That's what creates the more and more. And that's where it's like, there's no limit to the financial results or the achievements when there's just a constant evolution of who you want to be. And so I, I notice a lot of people who are very in the like personal development focus side don't actually have strict tangible goals a lot of the times because they know that's a representation of this other work. So how could I even put a number on it? That's what I started to realize is like, it was fun to hit you know, 100K a month or a million or whatever, but then you start to realize like, this is all going to keep growing so fast and the numbers are going to keep adding up, but it gets to be now a reflection of the, the what I would consider more fun, like the inner stuff and just going and like, that's how you collapse the time. And so I think this is a huge realization for a lot of people to realize this earlier if possible to like crack that code will set people free when it comes to money and everything, so... Okay, Lynn, did you want, did you have anything to share with that? Yeah, I remember my goal was um, for a six figure business. And I thought that was kind of doable with two kids. I also wanted to be present for them and didn't want to, I had a nanny when I had the shop, but I didn't want that again. I just wanted it to be me parenting them. So I thought, right, this, this is realistic. But then when I got there, I was like, is this it? I still felt like there's so much more. That was 2017. So yeah, it's like, we just kind of keep going and keep going. For me, it's just so much more, so much more now. Like it's, it's everything you said, it's, it's who you're becoming. It's the creativity, it's the visioneering, it's stepping into it, allowing yourself to do it. It's the travel, it's, it's been every aspect for me. And I think the coolest thing about this too, and for me, I love this feeling of like, every year or every season of your business gets to be completely different based off of what you want. Like some people are like, this is the season of travel or some people it's like, this is the season of really refining the work and the programs. Like, so like, there's no, there doesn't always have to be like a concrete thing of like, this is what I have to do. And this is what it has to always be. It's like, let yourself flow and have different seasons of success. And as we keep doing this work, it's like, we realize that we want different things. And, and again, like, tied back to the freedom piece, like to me, that's freedom of like, I get to do whatever I want to do. And every time I have a new vision of what would be so amazing, I just do it. Like what? This, this is what our lives get to be, which is incredible. So what I actually want to do now, shifting gears a little bit, this is also good, by the way. Um, we have been giving away, I have been giving away awards there's been a few awards during the collective festival um that we've been presenting in the collective last week we did one for regina on the industry and i'm giving away the final award right now i have a feeling the person knows who it is and what i'm gonna do is bring i'm gonna screen share the video and we get to watch this video and then i'm gonna get all sappy and present this award so are we ready audience are we ready give me a minute to bring up the things and this is going to be really special. 
Okay, if I can, why well, can't out oh, present? Present. Next time the collective, I was all over the place, like nervous system wise, the way I look, and not, I'm not saying anything like I still love myself, so look beautiful, but like. There were certain things that I was doing that just didn't make sense with the vision that I had and where I wanted to be going. That time I was making like 20K month, 10K, 20K months consistently. And then right around when I joined the collective, I don't remember, it was like April, May. Then I started doing 30K cash and, and then growing from there. But I think the biggest part was being in the community of women that were dreaming so much bigger than me and achieving it like I saw people in the face group Facebook group being like I did this this month and I'm like this is normal <laughs> and I'm like oh yay a space where people are taking it seriously they're loving their lives like some people I know in the collective are mothers like that's really motivational to me and to see them run their business at the same time I was like I have to be in this space now I'm just so much more confident like grounded in who I am and what I'm doing I can see the business long term too. I think then I lived a lot in the short term and now we're doing like 90k cash month. So to go from that to this, like oh okay. it's still playing in the background. Like, how do we stop this music? Okay, here we go. Bridge. <laughs> so we have been doing congratulations, awards of recognition of people who just stand out in the collective and bridge is someone like i'm not gonna cry but like bridge is someone who i have been able to develop an amazing relationship with within the collective and in masterminds and in private coaching we had a weekend together in montreal like less than a month ago which is crazy and there's so many things to say but i remember bridges first i believe it was the first offer in my world was when i did the juicy offer and this was like a kind of like a secret offer it was really like if you got into that as your first offer, like there's something about you, like, you know what I mean? And I remember when I was leading that masterclass, it was on Zoom. And I remember like when people have their videos on Zoom and not everyone does, like I see them. And I remember seeing like bridge, just the way that you were just like consuming and being present and like feeling into it. Like there was just something about the way that you were consuming that teaching that really stood out to me and then you joined the collective I think right after on the back end of that and so to I, I remember that so vividly and then to see you transform like you said not only financially from now 90k months and beyond but also your confidence your energy your entire brand your leadership your mindset like it's just a full transformation within that was within like I would say a year of the collective and we've didn't done some things outside of the collective but I'm just so proud of you and so proud to feature you and so many people in the community already know you but you're just bridge is such a testimony of truly doing the work like she is an incredible student an incredible client who really just wants to lean in and and anytime especially on in masterminds when bridge started to join masterminds last year like the way that she would just like take in the coaching like she would it just I envision just like a very like open heart a very open chest you know what I mean open mind of like I feel that I'm gonna I'm, that's gonna land with me like and she really just takes things lets it land and she moves and it's just the results that she's created across the board are is absolutely a reflection of the way that she truly leans into mentorship so Bridge, congratulations. We wanted to highlight you and feature you and celebrate you. And I don't know if you want to come up and give a speech and, you know, all the things, but please come up and share how you're feeling. I was not expecting that, but at all, I was like, I can't wait to see. And then I'm like, oh my God, just thank you. Thank you so much. I'm over here crying because like this, just being on this Zoom call with you, Stephen and Lynn and, and Lynn, I don't even really know you, but I love this this moment together and this time with you, Steph, like this is everything that weekend that we had in Montreal, like literally changed my life because being in the Zoomer is amazing, but being in person with you, like it was just so next level. And it, I think we kept talking about like, this is not normal. This is not normal. And it really allowed me to anchor in, like, it's okay to not be normal and also not to want normal things in life. And like, that's just what I've been uncovering so much is like, 
bridge like who is Bridget James Lang and like that's the greatest gift ever so just thank you you're so welcome I love you so much the whole community loves you the team loves you I love you Eric loves you when you come to weekends <laughs> with me you also get to meet Eric which is like it's like a bonus free bonus you get to meet Eric no. but I just you're such a light in my world and I'm so grateful that we cross paths and here you are and like to just witness you and what you're creating and your own movement and your own everything is just phenomenal and so it's like what's going to be a year from now is just mind-blowing to think about and this is not normal and for everyone watching like like I believe if people are in my community you have that in you of like you you want to do things that are unrealistic you want to do things that's it's just not conventional it doesn't make sense and I think sometimes we fear like being that person or being that one whether it's in our families or communities but it's like there are people who are normalizing not being normal unrealistic doing unrealistic things unrealistic results and this whole other conversation and, and bridge is such a living example of actually like having the time of your life building your business, running your business and just life. It gets to be your dream and it gets to be the way that you want. And, and we get to just decide to have lives like that. So just buzzing. Congratulations, Bridge. I love you. I'm so happy. Okay. I'm like, how do we, how, how do we end the, I'm always like, how do we even like close all of this? I'm like, I just want to, I just want to keep going. I think that it would be maybe cool if we share or if you feel called to share like what feels like next for Steven, Lynn, Bridge, even like, like you're here, you've done so much, you've experienced so much, like what feels maybe even this year, like what feels like the next thing? And it could be something, a big milestone, or it could be like a, a feeling or a lifestyle. I think it's always just fun to, to share what feels like next for you. Who's going to go? <laughs> Can I go? <laughs> Even go. For me, as I'm thinking about the business, something that I've I've wanted, to, I've been I've been called to do it, and I think like I just recorded last night a, a podcast episode about it that my ego has been holding me back, like oh not yet, not yet, not yet, and like sorry, fuck it, with no yet, not not now, not now yet. I'm gonna do it anyhow. So um, for me, it's like starting the membership. A membership in my world is something that I want to do. And I've been already teasing it and I only share it with my mastermind group. And uh, let's even start there. Having a mastermind, remember I told you like, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a mastermind and I'm, I'll be happy if one person joins. And I'm like, wait, my goal was 10 people and I have 10 people. And I'm like, oh, shoot, what the hell? <laughs> and oh now sharing with them, the members are like, oh, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I'm like, oh, shoot, I haven't even announced it publicly yet, which kind of, I, I just did. <laughs> but I'm I'm doing it more pu publicly today, actually, on my Instagram as well. And that for me, the business side is like that. And also, I've been manifesting this new apartment in Rotterdam this is where I wanted to always live and it's in the centrum and I'm like I want it I want it I want it and I manifested it I'm moving like in two weeks oh there and I'm like wait what so like all of this and as you, you bridge and uh, all of you were saying like this is not normal like the, it's it doesn't feel normal but at the same time I get it. And yes, it's normal in our world. It, not for everyone, but it's normal for us. And I'm like the two, two years ago or three years ago, when I started all of this, I didn't know this was possible. And now I'm here and I'm like, wait, it's only been two years. It's only been two years. And then sometimes I just stop on that. Like, wait, it's only been two years. Like, <laughs> what <laughs> so oh that for me is like that this is where i am right now and i really want to thank also for of course like you staff the community you've created such a beautiful community the collective is always like where do i want to where, where do i want to tap into right now where do i want to go for this kind of energies like the collective let's go and i go in there and i I, I I get into this energy and like yes let's go and I I love it I love it so thank you 
Stephen, this, congratulations. This this is everything. And I mean, so much of what we've been saying, all of us here, of like, like it's only been two years. You did those things that you didn't even realize were possible, and it within two years. So like, what next? And to stay plugged into that expansive energy and mindset just allows you to keep growing. But from this empowered state of like, but what next? Not like anything is bad or wrong from now, or not like you need to run. But it's like, what else do I want to do with my life? And like. I'm just, you are amazing. I fell in love with you all over again on this call of just witnessing you like this. Like, I'm just, I'm so excited. Congratulations. This is phenomenal. Okay. What's next for, for someone who else wants to, Delin, do you want to jump in? Yeah, sure. So um, next Friday, a week today, I'm actually launching new social media page, new content, new everything. So it feels like I'm moving home because I've had the same kind of vibe for a while now. The last rebrand I did was just after COVID. This one just feels completely different. And I haven't even told you this, but I'm launching a completely new division within the company that's gonna be so crystal clear what it is that it, I'm excited about that as well. That's just literally come through. And then similar to Stephen, like my big goal is to build and it's an extension to where we are at the minute. We're on a farm and it's just this gorgeous big extension over there that I just want to get stuck into. And it's so funny because this week in my house, we've had two leaks. There's one on my office roof. So I'm like, how long do I get in here? Everything is telling us to start the renovations, to start building. So it's like, okay, I, I want to be a bit more creative and think outside the business as well. I love that. I, I think that, and I love that you shared that because I think we often get stuck of only thinking in the business, but like, like we get to create a whole life, right? Like our, our house, our, like even Stephen, like moving all these things, like it, like it's the, we get to fill our whole lives that influences the business. And so to think outside of the box like that is amazing. And I'm so excited for this new division that came through. Oh my God. I can't wait to hear more. Okay. Bridge, what could possibly be next? <laughs> I am so obsessed right now with doing pop-up events where my community is hosting Freedom Queen events around the world that maybe I'm not necessarily at all of them, but having them be their own leaders of the Freedom Queen events in their location. So right now we're, we're planning a couple out. So there's that. And it's just a lot of anchoring in. Like I want to go do more VIP weekends with clients, with people, be at more retreats, more in-person stuff. And then I love that we're talking about housing because it's something I'm looking at getting long-term housing in, in Thailand or long-term housing in Costa Rica where we live and just to like anchor in more and then also fly at the same time. So that's like the, per that's the balance is anchor in and fly at the same time. Like keep like anchoring in the new foundation, the new level, and then keep expanding at the same time. This is so good. Oh my God. Yes. Events, in-person stuff, all the things. <laughs> okay. How are you guys feeling? How is everybody on the live feeling? This was so good. I'm obsessed with this conversation. This was incredible. Like when I say I have amazing people in my world, this is what I mean. Like this, I've got amazing people doing amazing things in my world. And I think the world of Lynn, Stephen, Bridge, you guys are truly I'm just so grateful to have people like you inside of our communities and to be able to share and and to do the work that you're sharing with the world and to, I said this on the industry last week. I think it's a really cool thing to be able to like celebrate and support the com like the the membership that you're in, but that doesn't take away from yours. You know what I mean? Like it's really cool to, and I I haven't done stuff like this a lot in the past. Not like it's for whatever reason, but I had this this realization last week of like how beautiful is it to just have people come on and share how happy they are to be in your world and it doesn't take away from anybody else and that kind of community that we hold it within the collective within our free community is just one of the most amazing things for me so thank you guys for being here and thank you for being you and thank you for sharing all that you want to share and I just so much love for all of you for everyone watching if you're in the collective thank you for being here we have our celebration call in a few hours at 2 30 eastern time for the festival so i hope to see you all there and if you are just joining us i hope that you were inspired and now you can connect with lynn and stephen and bridge if you haven't been connected with them before sending so much love to everybody
Oh, and actually, this is what I will say. There is no industry next week because I am doing the masterclass for people who have never been in my world before, which by the way, I need to check the numbers, but I think we're around 700 signups. Last night was 560 something. This morning was like 680. So it might be around 700. This is a masterclass for people who've never been in paid containers before. So if you've been bought anything, even on exogingy.com, you cannot be in this. If I said this in the festival yesterday, if you've tried, some of you may have tried, you get an access denied. Steven, did you try? I can see him laughing. You get an email that says access denied. I decided to be dramatic about this and say, yes, it literally is access denied. Thank you for trying to join this masterclass. However, our records show that you have been or you currently are paid clients. I'm sorry. But if you want to share the masterclass with your community, make sure you tag me or the team or message the team because I'm doing a call for anyone who shares. So I said this in the festival yesterday, there's no FOMO, but it's just, you're going to miss the masterclass. But if you want to be in something, then just share it. And I'm doing a call for people who share. So that's a whole other thing that's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. So a little too much information about my thought process, but I was like, I'm going to give myself a break on Friday because I'm doing the masterclass on a Tuesday and Tuesday is my step day. So this is my thought process. So no industry next week, but if, if you're, if you want to be in the masterclass, be in the masterclass. With all that being said, I have literally had the best time today with you guys, Lynn, Bridge, and Steven. And last week, the collective members that we had on, I hope that you guys enjoyed this kind of a style for the industry. I think it's so cool to just learn about clients and experience and stuff like that. And also just make connections. You might now connect with people you've met on here, follow them. You might become a client or collaborate in other ways, which is the most amazing thing. So thank you, Lynn, Bridge, and Steven for being here today. Everybody who is on the, li the live, thank you for being here. Have a fabulous week and I'll see you where we are connected next. <laughs> Bye guys.